feel when you leave the microphone too close and you're like, Ugh. <laughs> Cheers. Welcome, Angelique. Appreciate it. <laughs> it is. It is as if you were summoned by. Missed the good bit? Oh, it's okay. What's up, piano man? Oh, yeah. Oh, dude, that scherzo is super, super new. I'm glad you enjoyed it, though. I'm so glad you're picking it up. Maybe one of these days uh, I'll go through some of the things I was figuring out about it. It's super hilarious. It's like full of jokes, man. Yeah, uh, it's funny. Like, I've played this piece a long time and I still have new approaches that I want to try. And um, that's why it's a little bit rocky right now is I'm doing a lot of new stuff with it. Part of which is totally syncopating the wrist motion between my hands. So it really is throwing me for a loop, actually, right now. It was in the zone. Hey, Lloyd. <laughs> the fourth ballad. I love the fourth ballad. What are the details? Um, well, it started with figuring out, um, like, I always puzzled over the beginning, right? And I sort of... After, after figuring out some things about the third ballad, I started trying to apply different, um, different ideas for visual scenarios to some of this music, you know, to get a sense of it, right? All right, Shade, you sleep well over there. Thank you again for the raid, for the gift subs. All the support means a ton. Um, So it kind of started with figuring out the beginning might have something to do with, like, here's, here's just my concept, right? Might have something to do with um, something approaching from the distance, like a sort of, um, like a sort of parade or um, an ensemble playing a polonaise, if you imagine them approaching from far away, because this music doesn't make a whole lot of sense if you just play it, the notes, right? What, what is this? And then this? It's so strange, right? To me, it only makes sense if I'm imagining something that you barely hear off in the distance. You hear downbeats first, and then you hear the drum roll leading up to the downbeats. And the reason that it's so dissonant is that it's doppling around. Like if you imagine this sound sort of um, just doppling around, bouncing off of things and getting a bit distorted. You would think that this is the big arrival, right? And this was my big clue, actually. Is that it's a single forte here, and it's not the arrival that comes in a minute. And he drowns it in pedal. Here is Chopin's pedaling. is drown and pedal. So rather than discard Chopin's pedaling like people usually do, I'm like, why the hell did he do that? So I think that I think that this is still the approaching idea, and then you get the big, you know, the big um, arrival the second time when it's really like coming to be on top of you here. <laughs> yeah, it's piano, piano. <laughs> My, uh, my third ballad, I do Chopin's pedaling, and um, that's, that's one of the trickiest pieces to do Chopin's pedaling, I think. And, um, and it produces one of the greatest effects, but it's super hard to pull off, right? Azalite. Azalite. Hey, what's up? Um, but yeah, you get a lot of, you get a lot of things, right? Like 
Sure, I've played the octaves like this before. But it's not that. It's not a horse running down a fucking hill about to fall over, I think. It's a bit more playful than that. And the phrasing is different than you think. And then there's a little bit of a, of a, of a feels like a trumpet or something. <laughs> Thanks, Piano Man. Uh, and then later on, you get you get this sort of d uh, death knell sound almost, where you. And if you think, if you look at these bass notes, the march the the march thing that we just had. This is just up a half step in the outer notes, right? And he has an accent over every C in the right hand. smorzando which is die die away so I feel like I can do as much out of that smorzando as possible the dynamics are quite intense in that one including the depressive lull before the end climax I think so it's kind of a fake out right like it's a fake out like okay the the thing is past you know what whatever comes at the end of the parade this is it this sort of weird dancey thing I still don't get it right like I don't um, but then you get one final nice reprisal and the left hand is syncopated but it's like this so that's what I'm trying to accomplish is a little bit more upbeat and the, if you notice, the polonaise rhythm is actually something between the hands, because the polonaise rhythm is da 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 Neither hand actually has this by itself. You have to put them together. You have to do this. And I don't want to land on these downbeats, right? Are we already there? Okay, that's a great way to start the night. Like a master has to keep up a front, but sometimes gets tired. I feel that weariness in, in certain pieces of his for sure. Yeah, Mama Jen, um, learning about Chopin's inspirations, like who did he read? Well, he read a lot of Adam Miskiewicz. Then I made all these discoveries about the third ballad and its relationship to the poems of Adam Miskiewicz. Um, uh, I haven't really dug up too much on the others yet, but the third one is a, is a stark, like, here's the thing. Chopin hated music that followed a sort of story, generally. He really generally did. Uh, like when he heard Sch Schumann's Carnival, he's like, that's not even fucking music. Scathing about it. Um, so these ballads, written after the ballads of Miskiewicz, are his, some of his only attempts to be pictorial in music. And when composers do that, you get a key to their psyche a little bit. Um, then you can start to see, okay, they, they're using a similar device in another piece, but they elaborate this way. It becomes a way that you unlock the rest of their output. Did he always rip Schumann's works? I don't know. I just know what he said about the carnival. Schumann was a little tattletale, 
Like, for real. He'd, like, he'd, like, go interrogate Chopin, and he'd write to all his friends. He's like, yes, Chopin said this. Oh, dude, I like it, Elias. Elias has got a mushroom, too. Like, more insight into Ballad number one. Well, apparently we need to read Conrad Wallenrod. Um, and I don't get it yet. I have looked at the synopsis of Conrad Wallenrod. What you got there, Misty? You want to start with I do. Apples with cashew butter and honey. Can I spell it? Yes. It's like this, and I believe uh, I believe I have a synopsis of it around here somewhere. Um, it's a little easier to find than Switizanka, which is the third ballad. Fourth ballad, sadly, there's only half of the autograph scores that survive. Oh, and by the way, if you have the opportunity and you're studying music like this, Go find the autograph, that is, the handwritten score by the composer. That was another key. Chopin was very precise. He's not going to be marking a lot of this stuff in the exact places that he's marking it if he didn't mean it. And a lot of the, the character that is in the handwriting is totally lost when you go to print. Oh, but Noodles... Within the framework of things that I'm trying out, I'm always looking for new opportunities and I'm always experimenting. Like, that's the thing you can't let die. You can't just say, this is my interpretation, put that in a glass case. This is my perspective. Put that in a glass case. And here's your museum piece. Because I think if you really relate to the story, there's room for the composer's voice and your voice. It doesn't have to be um, a submission to this moderation that, that people kind of, uh, recordings have made, and especially when you get trained in classical music. 